Greetings and welcome to Mr. Van Lowe's poorly monetized, low budget science channel. Do not click like, do not subscribe, unless you must. Okay, uh, today we're gonna cover topic A.1 in the new IB Physics syllabus. And this is our first lesson, uh, kinematics. So I'm gonna go through the learning objectives here very quickly, you can skip ahead if you don't want to listen to me read them. Uh, you will be able to understand after this lesson that the motion of bodies through space and time can be described and analyzed in terms of posi position, velocity, and acceleration. That velocity is the rate of change of position and acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. That the change in position is the displacement and the difference between distance and displacement as well as the difference between instantaneous and average values of velocity, speed and acceleration, and how to determine them. Okay, so we're gonna start with distance versus displacement. And as you can see here, I have a map of Tokyo. And this is a walking route that I would have taken from Shibuya to Shinjuku Gyoen. And this walking route has me going around and around and I'm curving through as I walk through Yoyogi Park until I finally get to my destination. Okay, the distance traveled in this example is 4.4 kilometers, but my displacement is represented by this green line and it is a straight line. Uh, you might call this as the bird flies. And my displacement here is much smaller, only 2.5 kilometers at this angle. Okay, so let's talk a little more. Distance is a scalar value that gives the length in meters traveled by an object. Displacement is the linear distance between two points traveled by an object. Okay, so we can define it as the change in the position of an object. So you could use your coordinates here, uh, xy coordinates here and xy coordinates here, and find the change between those x and y coordinates, and that would give you displacement. Okay, so displacement is what we call vector, and as such, it will have magnitude and direction, and in IB physics, we'll usually give that as an angle, although you may also see what are called bearings in the new syllabus. Okay, I will have a video for vectors and scalars for a full breakdown, and I will put up a little card in the corner here so you can check out that video as well. All right, let's talk about speed and velocity. So speed is a scalar quantity and it is given by distance divided by time, okay? So this is a scalar, this is a scalar, this is a scalar. Velocity, however, is a vector quantity given by displacement divided by time taken. So here, velocity is a vector and displacement is also a vector. Uh, however, time is still a scalar, and, if, and you can uh, divide or multiply vectors by scalars. That's fine. Okay, so here velocity is defined as the rate of change in position of a body. And calculus students may recognize that this is a first derivative of position. So direction of the velocity vector is going to be the same as the direction of displacement. That is always going to be the case when you multiply or divide a vector by a scalar. Your new vector will have the same direction. Okay, average velocity uh, is defined as, well, first let's start with instantaneous velocity. So instantaneous velocity is defined as the velocity of an object at a specific instant in time. Whereas average velocity is defined as the velocity of an object over a longer interval of time. Okay, here's an example. I ran my first marathon by running in a perfectly straight line for 42.195 kilometers in exactly 15 hours. Okay, so my average velocity in this case uh, would then be equal to 0.78138 meters per second. And this is the correct number of significant figures because all of these are significant. Okay, any problems here? Uh, first problem is 
people don't usually move in perfectly straight lines. That's not really how humans or topography work. Uh, another problem here is that my velocity over these 15 hours is going to vary, okay? So here's a graph showing the velocity of a very slow teacher running a marathon over time, okay? And what we'll see here is uh, my velocity is changing during this whole thing, okay? So at any single point in time, we can look at my instantaneous velocity, but over the entire marathon, we would think about an average velocity that might look something like this. Okay, so our average velocity is given by displacement divided by time taken, and we've already seen this equation. Okay, so next we have acceleration, and acceleration is a ve vector quantity given by a change in velocity divided by time taken. And the direction of acceleration is going to equal the direction given by our change in velocity. Okay, so calculus students will be happy. We've now hit the second derivative of position versus time. Okay, so acceleration then is the rate of change of velocity. And any change in either speed or direction is going to require acceleration. Our unit for acceleration is meter per second squared. I'm not sure we talked about the unit for velocity. It is the meter per second. Okay, so average acceleration. Um, usually we'll talk about acceleration in, as a constant in IB physics, but in reality, uh, we're usually simplifying our model because uh, real acceleration is going to be more complicated. So in any case, average acceleration will be equal to average velocity divided by total time. And there you go. Next, I want to look at a few graphs. And the first graph we have here is displacement versus time. So this is a graph of a projectile that is launched vertically into the air. So straight up and down. Uh, and I think that point is clear. This particular object is going to go up for exactly one second and come back down in exactly another second. So we have a total travel time of two seconds. The maximum displacement is going to occur after one second. And we have here, of course, a parabola. So if you've seen quadratic equations previously, you may recognize that this is one. Okay, here we have distance versus time for the same object. And here we're only concerned with our total distance traveled. Okay, so total distance here is going to be 10 meters for this example. The direction of motion uh, doesn't matter for distance versus time graph. And now we're looking at uh, our displacement versus time graph uh, with these lines here. Okay, so what are these lines doing? So these lines are called tangent lines, and tangent lines intersect with a curve, but only at a single point. Okay, so if I drew this line slightly differently, we could have it intersecting with two points and it would no longer be a tangent. Okay, so uh, in calculus, once again, um, we would call the slope of the tangent line a derivative. Note that IB physics doesn't usually require the use of calculus. So I'm just putting these terms in there so that you're, you recognize what they are later on if you decide to study calculus. Um, it is pretty useful for physics, but not a requirement for IB physics. Okay, so the slope of one of these tangent lines is going to give our instantaneous velocity at this time. Okay, so you will see here, if I drew a tangent line here, I'd have quite a steep slope, and that would give a large value, large positive value for velocity. And as we traverse the curve, we're going to find that our velocity decreases. Uh, until it hits zero at the apex. And then our velocity will become negative, which we see over here. So this orange line is showing a positive velocity, and our purple line is going to show a negative velocity here on the other side of the apex of our object. Okay, so here we have a velocity versus time graph, and this is showing what I demonstrated earlier. In a velocity versus time graph, for an object under constant acceleration will just be a straight line. Okay, so our positive velocity is going to decrease to zero as the object goes up. 
And then after the apex, as we see here, our, our object is coming back down and our velocity will now be negative. Okay, uh, that zero velocity is only for an instant in time. And it raises an interesting question for physicists. Uh, is time quantized? I don't know. Is time quantized? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, so uh, from zero to one second, uh, vertical speed is going to decrease. This is a speed versus time graph now. Uh, and then the speed will reach zero at the maximum object height. And speed can only be positive because it does not have a direction. So that is why it comes back up. And from one to two seconds, we have an increase in speed. Okay, it's final speed. Um, and the instant before it hits the ground is going to be equal to its initial speed. Again, this is just a model. So in reality, you might find that we have some curves here, uh, particularly at our starting point and our finish. But for our model, we are simplifying. Okay, uh, next, acceleration versus velocity. Recall that acceleration is given by a change in velocity divided by time taken. Okay, so this velocity versus time graph shows velocity and time on the vertical and horizontal axes. So the slope of this graph is going to give our acceleration. Wow, that's very convenient. So slope is equal to a change in y divided by a change in x. And in that case, our change in y will be equal to our change in velocity. Uh, and our change in x will be equal to our change in time. So this then is going to give us our acceleration. Note also that m is traditionally the variable given for slope. And I don't believe this is in your data booklet, but it might be. I don't know. I've, this is my first time teaching the course uh, for the new syllabus. So maybe I will find that out later. In any case, uh, we have a change of 10 meters per second in one second, as you can see here. So our acceleration then must be 10 meters per second squared. Uh, which is about gravitational acceleration. Pretty close. Okay, finally, we have uh, displacement and velocity versus time. And we can calculate displacement by looking at a velocity versus time graph. So we know that displacement is given by velocity versus, uh, sorry, velocity multiplied by time. We also uh, use an S for displacement in IB physics. Okay, so here we need to calculate the area uh, under this velocity versus time function. Okay, so we need the area of a triangle. And we can just use this area. And here's a formula for a triangle. One half height times base. And this is going to give us a displacement of five meters, which we would have seen on our displacement versus time graph as well. Okay, here are my sources for this video. Uh, we have the Physics Course Companion from Oxford University Press. And here is my citation for my wheelie. And I use Google Slides, Maps, Concepts, Adobe Illustrator, and Latex, and a partridge in a pear tree. And finally, do not click like and do not subscribe, but do have a wonderful day. And if you have any questions or comments, drop them in below. Take care.